you're in school or all of you. Sure. Um, so I'm a senior. I'm graduating today. Okay, great. I'm a first year graduate student. Okay. And I'm, a, I'm a junior. Cool. All right. So you guys are, I had some freshmen and sophomores. So basically, what I'm going to start by saying is a lot of what is presented on this paper, at first glance, it seems very, very basic. But what is interesting is nine tenths of the feedback that we get from employers and managers and directors, etc., are really simple, I, I want to say mistakes or mishaps that are made in these seemingly very basic things. So I guess the bottom line to this is that there are so many things during your interview process that you cannot control. The questions are asking you, who's interviewing you, except this is something that's 100% in your control. So to take control of it, it does not behoove you not to take advantage of these little simple things, which are just like being prepared. And I liken it a lot to if you graduated you know, from Loyola and you got a 3.9 and you have a great grade point and you've done really well, but you hand someone a resume and it's got four mistakes in it, they're kind of going to be like, Okay, on to the next one, because there's a lot of people that are coming out of here with a 3.9 in their brain, and they're not going to really spend their time, because what it shows is that you either didn't proofread it, you didn't take the time to look it over, and it's just kind of, frankly, disrespectful, because it's something you can control. So, in presenting yourself, it's kind of the same way. They're not looking at you to be like, oh my god, I want to check out the new blazer, what's she wearing, or let me check out her jewelry. They're looking to say, are you prepared? Did you do your research? Are you conscientious? You know, did you have the fortitude to think about what you were doing before you came here? So if you get to the science behind it, it's a lot easier to, you know, feel like, and to feel from the other person why being dressed appropriately is important. And I'm kind of going to just go to the first sentence, which is just, you will never have a second chance to make a great first impression. And if you kind of keep that in your head, you know, it's, it's a very simple statement that makes a lot of sense. Heading on to the back page, it's this, uh, some recent studies have shown that managerial consultants and directors, etc., and people in general, make their impression of people within the first 7 to 17 seconds of meeting someone, and an initial yes or no, moving on to should we send this person forward for more interviewing, etc., is made 30 seconds after that. So you can see why initially really almost 10% of what goes on in the initial interview or first impression is what you're saying. The other 90% is really just their impression of you. They've already screened you, most likely, in some capacity. They've seen your grades, they've looked at your resume, they've seen your writing sample, they've you know, seen a video clip of you, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, however you contacted them. Now, they want to know how you're going to present yourself and how prepared you are. So, again, when we're talking about being in control of things, it's, it's just pretty simple as you would for you're planning a trip with your friends or planning to, when you got yourself to the interview an hour before, you weren't like, okay, where is this like in the loop or where am I going in St. Charles? You map busted it out, you figured out how long it was gonna take you to get there and how you're gonna get there, it's the same thing. You probably shouldn't wait till two hours before or even that morning to be like, oh, let me check out my suit and what dress do you think I'm gonna wear? Like, try it on days before, no matter what. Take it to the cleaners, that's $4. You know what I mean? Like, $4 to make sure there's nothing in your pocket. I had um, a client last week, a couple weeks ago, he had had, an inter he had two interviews in the week. We had bought, went out and bought him a new suit. He was very excited, he looked great. He had one interview on Monday, and then the next interview was on Thursday, and I guess they had given him, like, you know, they give out, like, pens or whatever, and he put the pen in his pocket and the cap come off so the ink was all over. So, like, you know, like, before you walk in the interview, sometimes you're just, like, nervous, put your hands in your pocket, like, just shake his hand. Well, he stuck his hand in his pocket, and he pulled it out, and there's black ink all over his hand. So now, okay, he can go to the bathroom, but, like, he's frazzled. He's like, I did all this, and now it's, it's something simple. It's those simple little things. I had another client last month. We got all that snow. It was like raining. She's like, you know, the Uber's gonna drop me off right in front. It's snowing really hard. I'm like, did you take a coat? You know, we're going over everything. It's like, I'm just gonna get dropped off right in front. Well, how many times has it happened? The train, Uber, cab. Oh, 818. Oh wait, it's 816, and you just dropped me on the wrong side. And now, okay, now she's running through. She gets there. She's all frazzled. The snow is mad at her hair. Her blood. Like, you don't want to come in like that. Look at the weather. Make sure your umbrella works. Take the raincoat. Someone else called me and said. They were interviewing a, a client of mine, and I asked for feedback, and they're like, you know what? This guy walked in here, and he was, like, shivering for 15 minutes. And you know why? He, for, he didn't have a hat or gloves. It's freezing outside, and you're, like, so distracted because you're freezing, and you're going like this. His handles go. That's, like, what they remember. 
They didn't remember what he was presenting. So again, it just goes back to the preparedness. Head to the front, the front of this, and basically the gold standard is always going to be, and, and still is, and has been, you know, a tailored neutral suit in gray, in navy, in black, a late colored dress shirt. For men, the tie and the socks, again, this is not the time to highlight your fraternity, your favorite sports team, go blue, it's Valentine's Day. Chris, tailored, not flashy. Make sure you have a belt. Make sure your shoes are polished. Make sure that the hem of your pants has been hemmed if it doesn't fit. You know, all these little things are in the initial reaction. Um, and with, you know, for women, you shouldn't, you're not walking in there to, you know, it, no cleavage, no, I want to say like see-through, that's what I'm going to talk about, like, you know, no silk blouses, it's appropriate, it's crisp, it's tailored. Someone just asked me in the last thing, like, God, I never know, should I take off the jewelry, should I take off my rings? If you have to ask the question, no. You know, err on the side of simple, classic, tailored. Some people, again, if you're interviewing creative fields, their questions are always, well, I want to be able to show a little bit of my creative side. Okay, once you get there, that's great. In the second or third interview, you are never going to feel uncomfortable being overdressed. You will feel uncomfortable being underdressed. And even if it's your friend, your sister, your, you know, you're reading online and you're looking, oh my god, everyone wears flip flops and tees and open toe sandals and it's really casual. Not you in the interview. You are still showing up in your suit. If for some reason you get in there and everyone is in a tank top and khakis and whatever, you can say, may I take my jacket off? And then, you know, you, okay, then you're in your shirt and you're in your pants and you're not so... But so, you know, don't ever forget the tie. Don't ever not have a jacket on. No matter what they tell you, how casual it is, how you know, laid back, etc. Um, so, if I could... Oh, sure, of course, of course. So, college student, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know the first thing about going to get a suit okay. and get a tailor. Yep. So, where in, so, in Chicago, where all right, am I going? So, it's a great question. And what am I looking for? So, what you're, so, again, you follow these rules, and if you Google, or, like, you don't even have to be on Pinterest, but if you just Googled on, in any Google search, whatever, tips for successful dressing, okay, there's been a problem with your, like, you know, tips for successful dressing, interviewing success, you will get 1,500 things that will tell you, like, I mean, this is just one, it's on Pinterest, whatever man should know, and it's always going to be very much the same, and it's kind of what I really tried to simply lay out here. A tailored neutral suit in gray, navy, or black, a white shirt, and a tie with a pop of color, you are never gonna go wrong. A light colored shirt is not a suit. So, for someone like yourself, I would check out, I mean, even the most basic stores, and not the Gap, but like J. Crew. And I suggest to everybody, sign up for everybody, Macy's, J. Crew, the most basic places that you can think of that are probably around you and are accessible. Nordstrom Rack, right across the street from you, great place to go. Sign up for everyone's websites. Within five minutes, you're going to get 30% off, 20% off, coupon, you know, very affordable. At, at somewhere like a Macy, I wouldn't say Macy's, but somewhere like a Nordstrom, if you want to invest in like a nice suit, they will do the whole nine yards. They will tailor it for you. You will pick it up. You will bring it back. If you are a senior and starting in graduate school, I do suggest, I mean, you don't have to go buy a thousand dollar suit, but I don't suggest you like order something online from like the men's warehouse and you're not sure how it fits. Invest in a one, I would rather you have one beautiful basic thing that you can wear to everything and buy shirts. Uh, oddly or not, I mean, not oddly, but as odd as it may sound, I've, have you guys heard of the store called Kohl's? Okay. <laughs> um, there is a line there called Mark Anthony. He was a singer. Okay, he has a line of suits and clothing. Um, like Jennifer Lopez has a line of, and, and she makes like, it's, there's a great like black blazer and black crop pants. So even if something as simple as that, you're not gonna get in those type of stores. You can find a helpful salesperson, but they're not gonna do the tailoring and that kind of stuff for you. In terms of you, Right now, I mean, most people your age are pretty, you know, like basic. There's not a lot of like tailoring. You can go to your local dry cleaner for hemming and basic like nipping and tucking. Okay. But at the store, try to get it as close to fit as possible. And I do suggest if you really have no idea and you've never done it, go to like a Nordstrom rack because they are pretty helpful. Sure. And so in the case of um, 
getting like a jacket mm -hmm. tailored. Yep. What, um, I guess I'm thinking like which areas should I make sure fit, fit. when so, they're on and in right. which case. And I most um, tailors, especially like in the city and urban areas, are very adept at answering the questions because it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. If you go to like a J. Crew or Nordstrom, they will do that all for you and they will tell you, even if they'll say, okay, it's XYZ to get it tailored, but then. And if you say, I don't feel like spending XYZ, can you just tell me what to do so I can take it to the local dry cleaner? Mostly, nine times out of 10 for men, it's in the sleeves and it's in here, but it's too big. So when I say tailor, I mean, you don't want to look like you showed up in your dad or grandpa's like old suit coat, you know, or something that you wore to some wedding or, you know, like your graduation from eighth grade. You want it to be tailored and fitted. And that usually means in throughout here and in the pants, it's usually just the hem. Now things are cut. So J. Crew, Nordstrom, Rack, even a cold, you can there's the lines that are there, Ralph Ryan Chaps, they don't they tend to be quite tailored. Um I think where else if you took a like a ride out to the outlets by O'Hare, there's a ton of stores there that also every line that you can think of. But I, I mean, you're in the city and you're downtown, you're accessible to a lot of stuff. I would probably start at J. Crew and Nords from Rack. And you will find something in all different price ranges. Okay. I don't want to. No, take no. I, I, I do have a question. Sure, of um, course. So I saw on the front you said stick to like neutral colors. I am a big fan of like bright colors. Yep. So I mm -hmm. understand like wearing neon pink or something is not appropriate. But is there a way to incorporate Well, like, okay, color? so the blouse you have. Okay, so like I'm here in this navy suit. I'm in this gray suit. And I'm a stylist, so I have like I. Right. I have a lot, I would say like pizzazz or people noticing sure. clothes. I would not usually put on this gray suit and be, I would feel like not myself. Right. So you can see that I have this blouse, uh -huh. but it's not, you know, so I've got a pattern, I've got a color. So you could wear a navy suit or gray suit and have the blouse that you have on underneath. Oh, okay. Put a little pop of color, in, but keep okay. the basics beautiful. Okay. And you know, now if you will interview at Chase Bank yeah. or Ernst & Young, no, I would I literally, I'm a, like Makes I said, sense. a light colored shirt. If you are okay. interviewing in any of those higher end, not higher end, more conservative banking, consulting, yeah. because that's their initial culture. Okay. Not once you get the job, but okay. you're going to be competing against 19 other women who are also, that are not right. going to have that on. Right. So you want to be appropriate with what's going on. No, sure. okay. I, in, in a little bit more create, you know, advertising, communications, all those other fields that are not the highly conservative, you know, any of the big eight accounting firms, no, you want literally what I'm writing right here. Okay. Other than that, you still do want the suit, uh -huh. but you can have a little creative license okay. with what you're I have like a two-part question, one which uh -huh. you just sure. answered. Uh, I'm looking for advertising agencies, mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, question is like, is, is like a tie a must? If I'm, uh, Again, in the initial interview, yeah. okay. the very first time these people are meeting you, now, should you know, I'm sure you'll be fortunate to be called back. Then what you do is they have liked you enough to speak to you again. There, you are going to be coordinating with somebody to tell you where to show up, whether it's via email, whether you write that person an email. I would be most comfortable in the second round not to wear a tie. Can I get your professional opinion in the culture that you work in? Do you would you feel that appropriate? If there is any hesitancy at all, like well, let me. So it's best to ask it's, them up front. It's best in the, in the first interview. For the second one. You are wearing a tie, sure. 100%. Okay. But like if they in call the, me back. If they call you back and you notice that every person in that room has a polo shirt on, which could very well, you know, a polo shirt or sleeve, then you could say, I would be most comfortable with that. What do you feel about that? Okay. But again, I think it just shows the sign of respect. Mm -hmm. It shows that you are thinking about what you're doing and you're right. presenting your best foot forward. And for men, a tie is standard. You know, mm -hmm. a, a three-piece suit with a vest. No, that's. But you know, you don't need a pocket square or a handkerchief. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. in your, in the second round, in a advertising creative field, my guess would to say no. But I would still uh, would say that it's appropriate. Okay. But I would still put the tie. Okay. And uh, so, uh, with regards to the blazer itself, uh -huh. like the. Like, I'm sure they, they won't probably remember, but it's okay to wear the same Absolutely. blazer. Get two shirts. 
and wear one with stripes in it the next time I do it. It's absolutely awesome. And if they tell you, because some people do, like even in your case, they might say, we are so excited, we're inviting you back for your second round of interviews. Please understand this is business casual. Okay, that's a whole, all right, if they tell you that, mm -hmm. that's what that means. You can wear khakis or dress pants and a, the blazer from your jacket, a nice sweater. You could then wear, you know, a fun kind of printed. If they tell you it's business casual, and I just always tell people, remember, weekend business is different than business, you know, weekend casual is different than business casual. So just remember that, that it's still business casual, not going out with your friends yeah. to the bars, you know, casual or whatever. So yes, in, in many creative industries, do say, please understand that our second round is business casual appropriate. If they say that outright to you, yes, then then it is your license to not have a tie. Mm -hmm. I would still wear a collared shirt. I would not show up in a polo. I would have you know a collared shirt like you were. I would still have a jacket or a sweater. Okay. And then you feel free to take it off if everybody has it. Please roll up and not. And preferably a plain color shirt. What do I? Like and, and again, in an advertising agency, like, again, for a second round, you could wear a shirt with stripes, with, yes, you don't have to be, in the first, I would keep neutral, but in the second round, and you'll see when you're there, mm -hmm. I don't think, again, I would show up in flowers, just, I mean, just because you're still interviewing, and I, like I say to people, you don't know that even if everyone in the room is dressed in whatever they're dressed in, oh, guess who just flew in from San Francisco, the CEO of the company. Now, the people that work there have already worked there, but then they're like, well, who's this guy? That didn't have the jacket. That's what they might remember. Who's the guy that didn't have the jacket on? Who's the guy wearing the floor? I mean, you don't want to be that guy. You want to be like, wow. I, it, so again, that's what I just say. Have it with you. Not to worry. Um, I was just giving you an example of like this is an advertising agency type of you know wear, but that is not what you are wearing on your first interview. You know what I mean? That could be what you're wearing to work, but. You know, um, these are all, you know, you're seeing the difference between something very conservative. Something that you pick up from a Zara or something. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, like a blazer from Zara. That is business casual. Right. Still the navy suit, but it's striped. The shirt is still the simple clothes. Simple, right, exactly. So you can have a little more clear. Absolutely. Awesome.